Good morning. My name is Tyler Nelson. I'm from Champlain, Minnesota, and for my senior accounting capstone project, I want to find the possible correlation between student involvement and career success. So I chose this topic because I'm a former athlete myself, and through my playing years, I found that I've learned a lot of valuable life lessons that hopefully will impact me later down in my future career. And also during my, in my internship, I noticed a lot of team, um, team oriented working environments. And I thought to myself that those who had prior experiences in working with teams would, would most likely be beneficial um, in these type of environments. So who will benefit from this research? Well, pending my findings, hopefully to encourage others to continually engage or join college sports or college clubs. I also thought employers might uh, benefit from this research because they're trying to find candidates who will uh, best fit their organization, especially if they're a very team-oriented um, organization. So my specific question is, are those who are involved in college sports or college clubs more successful than those who are not? And so to begin some existing research, um, EY found that for um, former female college athletes, that 48% of former athletes felt engaged versus 31% uh, of non-athletes. They also found that 62% of former athletes were, were employed full-time versus only 56% of non-athletes. They also found that former athletes had about a 7% higher income than non-athletes. And they also um, noted that 52% of women executives played collegiate sports. So another study I found was done in 1980, and they found that athletes fell under higher income brackets and also had higher um, average incomes. But some key limitations to that study was, one, it was done over 37 years ago, so I want to see through my existing research whether that's, these findings are still true today. And also, females were not included in this study because um, the study was done in 1980 and Title IX was not um, fully enforced or enacted as a law yet. Another study found that on average, former athletes scored higher on giving and taking feedback. Former athletes scored higher on emotional intelligence, or is better known as EQ. They also found that um, athletes had higher starting incomes, um, starting out and in year five, but by year 10, um, the incomes between athletes and non-athletes um, were very comparable. They also found again that athletes um, had reported a higher level of satisfaction with their career and through this study, they talked about the many differences between uh, males and females, which is something I will do in my research. So now, um, there wasn't really much research about um, club, um, club findings, so I only, had, only found two um, relevant um, articles. The first one found that um, college students that were engaged in clubs um, were, had higher social adaptation skills and were more um, had higher cooperative skills than those who did not participate in clubs. Um, they also felt that they were more applicable to the workforce. Another one found that just a few hours of involvement um, could increase their quality of job later on. And again, they found that, or they noted that extracurricular act activists were associated with increased labor market benefits, especially with those with disadvantaged backgrounds. So conclusions from existing research is that athletes made more than non-athletes, female athletes seem to benefit the most from participating in sports, and athletes uh, reporting, are reporting to have higher skills and uh, job satisfaction. And they, also to note that those involved in clubs seem to have gained very valuable um, skills for the workplace. So for now, for my research process, I sent the survey to thousands of CPAs through Boss's network I also shared the link to my survey in my personal LinkedIn account, and I analyzed the data, which through never-ending uh, pivot tables on Excel. So the first thing I wanted to do is, is, was compare athletes and non-athletes and club participants and non-club participants. So to begin with, we'll do athletes and non-athletes, and comparing income, it's um, comparing income, athletes earned less than non-athletes, and within gender, Male athletes um, earned less than non-athletes. However, one key thing to know is that female athletes um, earn more than non-athletes. So then I asked my, my, my survey respondents to assess themselves on skills like taking personal uh, responsibility for their work, 
uh, strong leadership skills, time management skills, how engaged they felt at work, stress levels, confidence to solve difficult problems, how satisfied they were in their careers, as well as how well they can effectively communicate with others. Now one thing to note here is on the stress levels. A higher number means that they're more stressed. So it's beneficial to, to fall under a lower um, score for stress levels. And for athletes and non-athletes, it seems that athletes had stronger skills in all the categories except for taking personal responsibility for their work. And one thing to note is that athletes, again, were more satisfied with their careers. I also want to find out some hierarchical position differences between athletes and non-athletes. And I found that non-athletes held higher positions than, than athletes. And again, looking at the gender differences, is that male athletes, however, held higher positions than non-athletes, but female athletes held lower positions than non-female athletes. So some other interesting differences between athletes and non-athletes. Athletes tended to work longer hours than non-athletes. Um, in general, those who preferred working in teams had higher incomes than those who preferred working individually. And specifically, again, going through the genders, female athletes preferred working more in teams than non-athletes, whereas on the flip side, male athletes preferred working more individually than non-athletes. And again, another interesting thing I found was that athletes were more likely to have a higher GPA than non-athletes. And this really surprised me considering that one, they're all, they're in school, they have to dedicate two, three, four hours at sports every day, and then they also have to maintain a social life um, as well. So I also asked them what was some of the biggest skills while they learned while playing collegiate sports. One respondent said that um, the ability to lose, and he said, you know, this may sound um, challenging. Whoops. This may, may sound confusing, but he says that many people go through life without competing and not knowing what it is um, to, to lose or not get your way. And they don't know what to, what, what to do or how to respond in the workplace. Um, and they don't know how to manage it. So that could be whether if they don't get a, the promotion they want or they don't get the job they want, they, they want, they may not be able to handle it better than say he would be able to by playing sports. Some common themes though I noted um, through the comments were, were teamwork, time management, determination, and again, um, how, to deal, how to deal with adversity, which this respondent seemed to uh, make clear. So now going into um, the differences between non-participants in clubs and participants, I found that club participants earned more money than non-participants. And again, in gender, um, both male and female um, participants earning more than non-participants. Again, I asked them to rate themselves on following skills. And very surprisingly, I found that non-participants scored higher in every single category than participants in clubs, which, is, which was extremely odd in reverse of the athletes. One thing again to note is career satisfaction. Um, Non-participants being more satisfied with the careers than, part than participants. And again, I did the same thing. I did hierarchical positional differences between uh, non-participants and participants. And unfortunately, I could not draw any uh, true conclusions because non-participants were so widely dispersed. I only had so many um, respondents say they were not involved in clubs. But one interesting finding I did note was that 90% of partners surveyed participated in clubs while in college. So I found that very interesting. Other interesting differences between non-participants and participants was that club participants tended to work longer hours than non-participants, same thing as the athletes and non-athletes. And those who preferred working in teams had higher incomes. Both male and female participants um, that preferred working more in teams had higher incomes than those who preferred working individually. Uh, male non-participants that preferred working individually had higher incomes than those who preferred working in teams. And again, just like the athletes, I found that participants were more likely to have a higher GPA than non-participants. So comments included by participants said one of the biggest skills learned while participating in clubs was question, and one respondent said it better prepared me for the working world than, than my classes ever did. And I found that very, very, very unique. Um, some common themes again, um, communication, leadership, and time management. 
So conclusions from my personal survey, um, athletes had lower incomes than non-athletes, athletes scored higher on self-assessment self, self skills and status, career satisfaction, club participants had higher incomes than non-participants, however, club participants scored lower on self and self-assessment on their skills and satisfaction with their careers. So to answer my question, are those who, who were involved in college sports and clubs more successful than those who were not? Well, it really depends on how you look at it. If you look at it quantitatively, just at their income, athletes were less successful if you look, were to look at my survey results. However, if you were to look at existing research, you would have concluded that athletes were more successful um, when looking at, again, prior research. And again, income, you would have found that club participants are more successful. Now, if you're looking at more of the qualitative skills, you would have found that athletes are more successful in, in both existing research and in my research, and that participants are less successful in my survey results. So it really depends on how you truly define success. Some limitations, I had very limited responses. Only 107 responses, and most likely all from Minnesota. So in the future, I would have liked, you know, at least triple the amount of responses from diverse areas of the country as well. Uh, another limitation is that there's many high incomes. So a lot of times you saw I use the median income instead of the mean because there's many outliers making upwards towards a million dollars. Also, another limitation is that survey response may be overstating their skills. The respondent would have said that they have very strong leadership skills, but in reality, they're a terrible leader that may um, not be a true indication. So further research and more further research in the future, if someone wants to pick up my project um, next year and continue on with it, I would highly encourage them to try and get as many responses as, as they could to find more true conclusions. Look into more different industries like healthcare, because most of my responses uh, were from the accounting or corporate um, fields, and specify the club participant criteria. Many responses with very few limited um, hours in their respective clubs. Thank you for listening.